you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is good for us to be in the house of the Lord. I had to look to see what was next in the order of the service. <laughs> this is my first. I say this, this is first my day. first day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it is good for us to be here today. For those of you who are in the church, for those of you joining us by our live feed, and for those of you that will be joining us by use of the videos, uh, even maybe later today or at some time during the course of this week. It's just good for us to be in the house of the Lord. Now, Dwayne. <laughs> Substituting for Paul. Understudy. The boss. Understudy. You are her understudy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure, you said. You said. Uh, this morning's reading is going to be taken from uh, Psalms. Now you're <laughs> Thank you. That's bad. It's a, That's bad. It is. They, they make something that's called Prevagen. Prevagen. I'm not right. <laughs> We'll continue now. Yeah, okay. Readings from Psalms, uh, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 17. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even you had formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. We sweep them away, and they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, and in the evening it fades and withers. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, and as many years we have seen evil. Let your work be manifested in your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands.
I'm having some hard times. I'll just share a little bit of that. Uh, things have, have not been going well. Uh, Wayne, I need you to help me in this. Uh, just hold on to that $10. And uh, I, I, I ran out of feed for my horses. And uh, I, I can't use them unless I get some feed. So I, I got to borrow some money. Uh, Wayne, yeah. can I borrow $10? Yes. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I need to borrow for a week. A week. week, yeah. yeah. Can't have it for a week. I, <laughs> <laughs> How about just nine days? <laughs> OK. Uh, listen, I, I, got, I got my coat here. I give it as collateral. Now, you, you pointed out there was a hole in it, so it has some collateral damage. <laughs> but but I, I, I'll give it, I'll give it to you. Well, it's cold today, isn't it? Oh, man. Here's, here's, here's my coat. You can have the cloud, and, and uh, I'll pay it back in 10 days, okay? Uh, in 10 days. It's so good. Can I buy some feed for my horses? <laughs> okay, okay. I'll feed my horses now. Man, it's, day's over. Man, it is cold. Hi, Wayne. How you doing? Yeah, buddy. It's cold out there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I wish I had something to wear. Yeah. <laughs> I've got ten dollars to pay back yet, uh, but I'm, I'm cold. You're good for it, buddy. I'm, I'm good for the cold. I'm good for the cold. <laughs> I can't. Can, can, can you help me, Wayne? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go read something. You're gonna, you're gonna burn, baby. <laughs> okay. Deuteronomy, by the way, 6, 7, 8, eight commandment, thou shalt not steal. Here it is, okay? Suppose your neighbor borrows something from you, and he offers you something to keep until you get paid back. Then don't go into their house to get it. Stay outside, let the neighbor bring it out to you. The neighbor might be poor, might be poor, and you might be given their coat to keep until you get paid back. Don't go to sleep while you have it. Return it before the sun goes down. They need it to sleep in, and will thank you for returning it. The Lord your God will see it and know that you have done the right thing. Can I have my coat back? Yeah. It's cold. <laughs> now, you know, it's a heavy coat. It's a cold money. Now, does that make sense? He didn't get his money back. He's not going to get it back. I may skip the country with my coat. And he's not. Isn't God ridiculous? <laughs> you know, to say that he has to give me back my collateral because it's going to be cold tonight. And this is all I have to cover me with to keep warm. Yeah. Why would God ask us to do something like that? Now, if I speak with the tongues of men and angels, I would have not love. I'm a noisy gong and a clingy temple. If I give my body to be burned, I don't have love. It comes for nothing. And then it goes on in 1 Corinthians 13 to say that there, there's three things that abide. Anybody remember what they are? Three things that, that remain? Faith. Hope. That's it. Hope. hope and, love. and love. And the greatest is which? Love. 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 Right. Faith is a great thing. My God. He had faith in me. You know, then I was going, no, maybe he didn't. I don't know. <laughs> you know. But, but faith is a wonderful thing to be able to move mountains. Paul says, if I can move mountains, but I don't have love. But, uh, or hope, you know, to, to uh, tomorrow's going to be a good day. Today, maybe not, but uh, you know, ever give up on that and say, tomorrow's going to be just as rotten as today. <laughs> and, and say, but hope is a great thing. But love is what binds it all together, as Paul says, and, and makes it possible. I don't know if the Jews ever lived by that principle. You know, like the Jubilee. Uh, you don't read much about it, except in Jesus. Um, but he does ask us to say, if I'm going to win $10, he says, see, and, and Wayne knows me, I'm a cheapskate. You know, I'm not trusted. I, I'll give it to him because I got to, but I ain't happy about it, you know. It's not the right move. He's looking and saying, that poor sucker, he needs all the help he can get. I'm going to have compassion on him. And, and, and he does. So that's that's a, so even the adult Sunday school lesson and the Ten Commandments tie together. If if we give but don't have love, 
They'll come on the electric side. It has to come from love. The greatest of these is love. I struggled with that. I'm going to tell you that right now. I did it in high school. I still do it today. I even struggle with it with my grandchildren. I bought them things at McDonald's yesterday. And, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, they don't care about that. They don't appreciate the rock and roll scum. Uh, you know, but got to do that wrong. Okay, who has a joy today? Brenda. Oh yeah, we have to wait for Brenda. Um, I got a text yesterday from my grandson Peyton with his yeah. driver's license. He got his driver's license. I'm expecting another one from little Junior soon here too, because he's been driving. He has a permit, so love two of those little rowdy kids. <laughs> no, Peyton only goes about 20. Yeah. Junior, I've been driving with Junior only, but anyway. And I also have a concern. I got a call yesterday, of course, most of you saw, saw it, but yeah. my brother fell out of the truck. He was with his daughter, and instead of waiting for him, for her to help him, he fell out. They thought he broke his shoulder, but he didn't. But he really ripped up his rotator cuff yeah. and they're just worried about that and with all his issues they were worried about that too about maybe having another stroke so Clark Stone so and when we were doing road cleanup we, we went out on Friday night for a while and we talked to this one lady that's so lonely I had to just stand there while he was picking trash up and talk to her so just all the hurting families out there need a lot of prayer that's my prayer, joy, and concern. Yeah, I'm sure what you said. You stood and talked to the person who needed yes, somebody to help. Yes, I did. Help. She just needed that. You never know what you pick up along the road. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She called me. She was a great concern. All right, anybody else with joys or concerns? Down here for Linda. Who's the handsome guy sitting with you there, Angela? <laughs> just following you. Just following you. <laughs> Oh, perfect, sir. Well, no, let's do the praise first. I have windows. Yay. Yes, I have windows after many weeks. You have windows? Windows, yes. Windows. Like things you look through. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. That's, that's, a, that's a joy. Uh, the other, uh, I have two. Is this, a, uh, you had no windows? <laughs> you don't take care of her and all the windows in the house? <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, All right, yeah. Uh, prayer concerns. Uh, my sister, I'd like to continue prayer for her. She starts next week, maybe late next week, with radiation treatment. And instead of just being in the one spot, she's going to have to have her uh, front and back the whole side because they're doing lymph nodes and a lot more extensive radiation than she had originally uh, expected, and also an unspoken. This is my prayer. And this is our, our prayer. prayer. Lisa. Uh, we had one here on the live feed. Um, Brian Barrick, um, his mom is having a uh, double knee replacement this week. Um, so we keep her in prayer. Her name's Linda Yo. Okay. So this, is, is, this is Brian's prayer. This, this is, is our, our prayer, prayer, too. My mother had that done. Two knees at the same time. Yeah. Uh, that was, it was rough. Yeah. We, we should say Diana DeVore had a knee replacement. She's doing very well. She's with Will and Hope. Uh, and doing well in terms of things. But yes, double knee. Oh my Antoine, Antoine. Orlando. Orlando. Present. Present. Dementia is no problem. Uh, Linda's, Linda's mom fell and she's in the Holy Spirit Hospital and they're probably going to have to send her to rehab. And so we'll see how that, hopefully short-term care. And anyway, just prayers for uh, us with dealing with that and for her to heal. She's, uh, she's stubborn, so. <laughs> she's what? She's stubborn. Stubborn! Oh, stubborn, stubborn. Uh, yeah, it runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, this is my concern. No, she, <laughs> she didn't break anything? Just no, no. no. She's okay. having sore ribs, though. So yeah. She got excited and down she went. Yeah. She had a stroke several years ago. I don't know if it matters, but yeah. So, anyway. And uh, the joy is that uh, I'm 
come here to church today, which is great. Yeah. And uh, I'm just, I just praise God that I've been able to work through this pandemic and be able to support my family. And mm -hmm. like, uh, like Brenda said, there's a lot of people out here who are struggling. Uh, Friday, I uh, went to volunteer at the farm show for the food bank, and I saw about three or four men walking the street just with signs on them and just, just something to do. Yeah. But when I left there, I went to Burger King and I bought the one guy uh, his lunch. So I went back and gave it to him, and he was grateful for that. So, oh, that's it. <laughs> These are my prayers. These so are our prayers. prayers. And our rejoicing is one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a prayer concern. Um, I lo we lost our cousin this week, 54 years old, and um, just to keep the Stout family in our prayers. Um, she had some complications and she just didn't make it. Um, I talked to Susie um, Smith yesterday, and she's going in this week for two different, two different, diff different procedures. So let's hope that they'll be able to find something here because. It's She's had some rough days this week. And um, she was telling me about Jim's um, brother's wife, which she has the COVID, and uh, she's in her shape. And it's kind of a sad situation there. Um, so just, just keep Jim's brother and his wife in our prayers, too. And also, um, this has been a kind of a sad week with um, some of our family. With the children going to school, um, my one little nephew was sitting across from a little boy on the bus, and Ryan loves school. And here he mentioned that they had COVID in their family, and sure enough, he's, a, he's quarantined, our little nephew's quarantined for 14 days, because he's, he was across from him. Yeah. So is the bus driver, so a little girl in the front, but the rest of the children were okay because they were far apart from the child. Yeah. So it's happened several times. Even my other nephew was the same way on Thursday. So they went yesterday to have him check to see if he doesn't have it. But I'm sure he doesn't have it, but he's off now too for another 14 days. So it's hard because when, they're, when they love school and want to be there every day, you know, it's just a bad transition. So. Just keep the children in our prayers while they're back and forth here in school. This is my prayer. And this is our prayer. Yeah. Up. Um, the way. If you would just keep following your prayers. Uh, I think she did a little bit too much yesterday, and she's paying for it now today. And uh, uh, usually, doing too much, her headaches get really severe. And I think that's one what's happening today. So. Uh, this is my prayer. This is our this prayer. prayer. Thomas mentioned it's good to see you down here, Gloria. Uh, but I'm glad to see you. You've been through a lot too with that foot. Uh, our sister Kathy is improving a little bit. Uh, word comes back. She's in still. She's in. Well, uh, was still in the ventilator, but she has improved a little bit and. Um, Hearing back from my sisters in the Lancaster area, they're saying thank you and all your prayers are working. I mean, just improving a little bit is great news. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. All right, let's join together in prayer as we share this time. Father, we come to you with uh, our, our thoughts and our prayers. Uh, we think of the, the young children in school and the uh, surge that's happening with the COVID-19 and uh, the fears and even disappointments as the football team is knocked out of the playoffs because of, of the COVID-19 in, in Newport and, and the disappointments that are a part of that, um, the fears even that come with this um, unknown threat that, that is like a plague over us. We ask for your wisdom and your strength. We ask for those who uh, are, are going through uh, the medical procedure, some with some improvement, others with uh, a long term of recovery and treatments. Um, we ask that your uh, presence be with them uh, for the strength of body, but also for the strength of spirit, uh, the encouragement. And we thank you in moments like this that we have families that 
Uh, even though they can't be there with us, they can, uh, they can encourage us and, and uh, share in, in those fears to help to allay them and to move on. We pray that you continue to be with uh, Sue as she continues to struggle and, and the tests that she'll have this week. Um, may they help to reveal to the doctors and to everyone how there must be a treatment and a, and a hope for this. Uh, again, we uh, thank you for this moment of worship, our time together, and may our, our sharing, uh, whether physically here or through the, the means of, of technology, may it be part of your church, praying and giving thanks and offering our, our love and our care so that there may be faith and there may be hope and there may be love as well. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
and with a towel on his arm, came up to her. And he said, Lady, do you believe in God? And she said, Yes, I do. Surprised by the question, she said, Yes, I do. And again he asked her, Do you go to church every Sunday, lady? Yes, she responded, again wondering why he was in this line of questioning. And then he came back with a third question. <coughs> he said, lady, do you read your Bible and pray every day? And again, concerned about the questions that he was asking, she said, yes, I try to do that every single day. With a sigh of relief, the little boy reaches into his swimming trunks and he takes out a quarter and he hands it to the lady and says, will you hold on to my quarter while I go swimming? <laughs> a question. You see, what he was doing was testing her. It's a test question indeed. Now let's read our scriptures today from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning at verse 34 through verse 46, the remainder of the chapter. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Now go back to verse 36. That becomes our text. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Now this little boy that asked this lady a series of questions before he entrusted his quarter to her was being very straightforward and he was being direct and honest and he wanted answers to his questions before he would entrust something that was valuable to him to someone else. Well, as we read the scriptures, we know that the Pharisees are not so honest. They have no intention of entrusting Jesus with anything. They're not looking for an answer to a question. They don't want someone else to be holding on to their quarters. They're looking for a way to get rid of this troublemaker, this Nazarene, by the name of Jesus. The Pharisees already have the answers to their questions. They felt that they already know the truth. They come to Jesus once again with a question that is designed to do damage to his reputation. And once again, Jesus proves to be up to the task that is before him. Teacher, which commandment is the greatest? Even though this question 
is designed to test Jesus, it is nonetheless an important question. And perhaps it may be the most important question in all of Israel at this particular time. First of all, which law is the greatest? Since the dawn of time, people have been looking for all kinds of ways to summarize their thoughts. So it's not surprising that during the time of Jesus, that these experts, the Pharisees, looked for a way to summarize the teachings of Moses and the prophets. Today, we as Christians simply call these writings the Old Testament. So how do you summarize the Old Testament? It's almost impossible. There are 39 books in the Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi, written over a 1,500-year period containing events that occurred in 2,000 years of history. We are told that there are at least 30 different authors of these 39 books, and possibly even more than that. And the books contain all kinds of literature, history, poetry, songs, prophecy, wisdom, and story form. The events are staggering, but it's about the history of a people. How in the world, then, do you summarize such a collection? Can it be done? Jesus indicates that it can be done. When he saw, says that the law and the prophets hang on two commandments. The first, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is what I believe is most significant in what Jesus is saying. In summary, at the end, Jesus says, all the law, now that's the first five books of the Old Testament, and the prophets, and that's most of the rest of the books of the Old Testament, hang on these two commandments. It's interesting to note at this point that the Jewish rabbis of Jesus' time have meticulously gone through the first five books of the Bible. And they have, in their great wisdom, come up with a total of 613 individual statutes in the law. And you thought we had a whole lot of laws here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, maybe even here in Perry County. Then they took these hundreds of commands, and what they tried to do is to break them down into two categories. They tried to, one hand, here's the commandments, the laws that are great. And then here are the ones that are the little commands. Well, you can just imagine the debate that would be going on all the time, the conflict between those who thought that this was great and those who thought it wasn't. Which is the greatest? And so they come to Jesus, hoping to trick him once again. Why do we have laws? We have laws today to tell us what it is that we've done wrong. The other side of that coin is love. Love tells us who we can be. And there is a difference. Of these 613 statutes, stand two obligations in the relationship that we have with God. We are to love God on one hand, and we are to love our neighbor on the other. Let me ask the question, what does the word love mean? How do we define it? 
Well, in their great wisdom, some professors at University A, should I say Grove City? No. Uh, professors at University A decided to go and interview some children between the ages of four and eight years, asking them the question, what does love mean? Now, here are some of their answers. Pay attention. Carl, age five, says, Love is when a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on shaving lotion and they go out and smell each other. <laughs> Elaine, age five, says, Love is when mommy sees daddy smelly, sweaty, and still says he is more handsome than Robert Redford. Right. Mary Ann, age four, says, Love is when your puppy licks your face even after you have left him alone all day. Think about that one. Tommy, at age six, says, Love is like a little old man and a little old woman who are still friends even after they know each other so well. Bobby, age five, says, Love is what's in the room when you at Christmas time stop opening your presents and listen. No. And then Jenny, age seven, says, there are two kinds of love. God's love and our love. But God makes them both. <laughs> now, you want to talk about philosophy. There is philosophy. Maybe it would do us well to pay a little closer attention to what our children have to say. God gave the Israelites something very simple to follow. The Ten Commandments. Ten rules. Simple rules. Nothing complex about them at all. But were the Israelites content with just the ten? Oh, no. They ended up making 600 and 13 separate ones. 365 of them were negatives, 248 were positive. Can you name all 613? I can't either. Try following those 613 in order to be considered faithful and righteous. And you thought trying to follow 10 was difficult. The Pharisees found this to be a complex issue. They're under assault from a man who claims to be God and can do God-like things. But the Pharisees think that only God is God. This guy is a Jew, and he should know better. No one is God but God himself. And yet he was a man who knew and quoted the Hebrew scriptures probably more proficient than any of the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees. And so the Pharisees decided, we've got to put a stop to this. The situation is getting out of control. It's becoming so complex, and it can't go on much longer. The only way to stop this man is we've got to discredit him. And what better way to discredit him than to ask him this complex question on an issue about what is the greatest of the commandments. And certainly the answer that Jesus would give would spell his defeat. Let me ask you this question this morning. Which commandment, and it's the test question, is the greatest? And as you answer the question, then you will be empowered to love God with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and you'll love your neighbor as you love yourself. Our task in the church has always been simple and direct, to let everyone know that God loves them and that God has a plan for their life. Even though we are sinners, God's made only one provision for us in Christ. 
We cannot and will not enter into God's kingdom until we have that relationship with him. The other day, while Gary was putting in the windows <laughs> in our addition, and his assistant carpenter was helping him, <laughs> or causing more confusion, I don't, I don't know. But I, I've learned stay one away. thing. I've learned one thing. When Linda's involved in something, stay out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's the best medicine. But anyway, <laughs> while, while they were doing this, I picked up Corey Ten Boone's book, The Hiding Place, again, and wanted to highlight some of that, that book in my memory. And most of us know about Corey Ten Boom, known by millions and millions of people. But what many people don't know is that her nephew, Peter Van Warden, was just as courageous as Corey. During the days of the Nazi occupation in Holland, Peter would transport children, Jewish children, under the cover of darkness to his home and to other places that were safe. And these children were then saved from being tortured and killed by the Nazis. Peter did this for quite a while and then finally he got caught. And he spent several months in prison. And at the end of the occupation, the war had ended. Peter and his family, which were very musically talented, traveled all throughout Israel, singing and witnessing about the Lord. One day, Peter had a massive heart attack, and he was admitted to the Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem. And the doctor on call that day performed a miracle by saving Peter's life. After Peter had recuperated from his heart attack, he was expressing his gratitude to the medical staff. And they began to discuss the Holocaust. And all of a sudden, the doctor burst into tears. And so did Peter. They compared their notes. The doctor had been one of the children that Peter had rescued years earlier. And now here they are, years later, their paths crossing. And one of those whom Peter saved from being extinction was there now to save him. That's the kind of love that today will save the world in which you and I live. It is that kind of love that knows no boundaries and no borders. And I say to us today that it's time for us to begin that pilgrimage together. I love the song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our Father, we talk about the test question today. Which of the commandments are the greatest? And Jesus responded, there are only two. Love for God and love for your neighbor. And so, our Father, I pray today that as we look at those things that are indeed valuable and important to each one of us, that we will also determine that our love for God and for one another is most important. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the opportunity that has been ours and is ours to be here even today to have the opportunity to share the gospel, which is the good news of Jesus, and the joy that is found in our heart from knowing you and serving you. Bless those who have joined us in our live feed and those who will view the videos even later. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity together, even in this time of 
pandemic, to be able to rejoice and to celebrate in the goodness and in the power of God. Dismiss us now with your peace and with your blessing, and let us go forth from here to serve in the Master's name. And together God's people would say, Amen. Amen. amen and Amen. Go in peace, and may the peace of God go with you as you greet one another, leaving from our service today. Thank you.